Welcome to Insight on the National Communications Network Incorporated, a series of programs designed to bring government's uh, work into focus to all Guyanese. Today, my guest is the Honorable Minister of Indigenous Peoples Affairs and Vice President Sidney Alcock. Minister, welcome to Insight. Thank you so much, and to all the listeners out there, I do hope you're enjoying today, and you know, it's the season of cricket, so I, I, I expect that you'll be happy at this time. Wonderful. Well, you know, these programs are designed uh, to <coughs> talk about uh, the work of the government, uh, particularly um, as we head into the season of um, preparing for elections and, uh, and so many other things that have been happening. So perhaps it's a good time uh, for you to begin by reflecting on, on the work and what has the journey been like so far, so perhaps a review of the Ministry of Indigenous Peoples Affairs and what has been happening. Thank you so much for this opportunity. And yes, I would like to share with the nation, with you and the nation, of my experience. First of all, coming into government, uh, my own experience is like going into a game, preparing and being ready to play the game. and. Uh, First of all, we had to lay a foundation by which we would be able to operate from. Mm -hmm. And of course, this is like taking over from a team, having your team now in the game. Mm -hmm. And uh, f for that reason, we had to make proper preparations, meaning that we had to look at the operations, our plan for the future and the uh, the main focus was having a green state mm -hmm. through a green economy leading on to a good life. Mm -hmm. So the first thing that the President, His Excellency President Granger, started out with is the, was the local government elections, mm -hmm. which would allow the entire country to play a part in its own development, giving power into the hands of the people. So you know there are three layers of governance. Central, where the president is in charge of the entire country. Regional, where the, all the regional chairmen are in charge of their regions. And local government, village uh, governance, mm -hmm. where the two shows or the CDC chairs are responsible for their development. <coughs> so that uh, was the the foundation. And for us, as a nation, we also thought about the towns, the capitals of these areas, of these regions, regions. And, and we have been able to have four of those capital towns, starting with Bartica, mm -hmm. then Madia, Lepem, and Mabaruma. Mm -hmm. So th that, was, that is to make things easier for the people within those regions. So having done that, for us at, at the Ministry of Indigenous Peoples Affairs, we also had to have a direction of operations. And uh, as you know, we have what we call the National Two Shows Council which represents the entire 10 regions of Guyana, uh, 215 villages and communities, and probably close to 100,000 indigenous peoples, nine indigenous groups. Mm -hmm. And at our conference, our first conference with the National Tushaus Council, we were able to open up if I may use the word, for all the indigenous NGOs and other interested uh, minded people, including media, including others, other Guyanese, to be part of the exercise. That's, that was to open up the National Two Shows Council 
for more transparency and of course for for a bigger circle of guidance so when that 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 was i think our first achievement setting the groundwork we then had the 10 point plan which was suggested or given by the president on the 28th of august 2015 and that plan is now being well almost been executed to the fullest and now we're seeing results and one of the first things that we recognized was that for our programs to materialize for things to be able to bring benefit to all we had to unite unite the communities because either through political or religious or other beliefs we've had that division it's still there but not as prevalent as it was in 2015 and we realized that over the years things might have gone wrong because the indigenous peoples always believe in unity, unity. and that togetherness was not there as we would have wanted to be mm -hmm. so to move anything we had to be bringing back our people together to understand the bigger value of life mm -hmm. and the opportunity for them so that was our um, our drive it's still not there but it is better uh, we have seen movements and we've been able to see communities now leaders now taking up their responsibilities of being responsible for the actions and coming up with plans coming with suggestions and that is very very useful we one of the key for this success is a village improvement plan where the villages the councils would know the area of their operations the natural resources that they have including human resources what talents they have what skills they have so that they could be able to plan better and we realize that to have proper planning there needs to be information flow and here is where or the welcoming implementation of radios radio stations six radio stations and more will come is is being really uh, useful mm -hmm. for allowing our people to have information coming from within the villages or the regions and the country and then of course internationally yeah. so in so doing they would have a better understanding of the welfare or the the information in Guyana and beyond so in decision making they would be better prepared to make their contribution and I think that that has caused us to now be in a better position to interact so while that communication is important we also have the we've been working on the land because indigenous people without land there is no hope <laughs> and um, for our people we have been tr fighting for this land because it is where real life exists and I think a lot of Guyanese especially Guyanese on the coast who have never traveled much do not understand the beauty of Guyana or, or, or the value of Guyana and here is where our people needs their land we've had this um, Amerindian land titling which started in 2013 mm -hmm. and I think it was a very ambitious project, project. Mm -hmm. to be completed within three years 68, 68 villages for extension and boundary surveys to be completed within three years if you want to do it well and that is what we have found we have found some communities 
saying that you know the, the, the boundary was not done properly, some were not completed, and we have to go and do that all over again. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, there is the FPIC, free prior and informed consent that must be adhered to. And this is a time-consuming thing. We have gone, we have had the experience of going into communities time and again, and when we think we are about to say, yes, we are going to move move ahead now with this plan, they, yeah, they come up and say, well, we're not ready yet, um, something else, we have to go back. And that is not only time-consuming, but it is very costly. Yeah, I don't think people appreciate the challenges and uh, to, to get from one part of the country to another, right. you know. So, right. um, yeah, that, that could be um, a little bit of a challenge. So, um, continue, <laughs> we're in the middle of land. And correct, yeah. correct. So, um, what has happened, that first phase ended, the three years ended in 2016, October. And then we applied for extension that we got another two years until 2018. Mm -hmm. And uh, we still did not get uh, to complete. So we have, and uh, we, we are lucky to have another period. And that will go until uh, the 31st of December 2021. Okay. And now we are in the process of fine tuning the budgets, uh, our staff. And we are hoping to expand the team mm -hmm. so as to do more work at the same time. And um, we're hoping that this will be able to close this, this gap. But having said that, indigenous land will never, never uh, go away. It will always be there. So what we're doing is having to create a unit in the ministry, a permanent unit. That would be like the first day, like the, the body ready to go look at issues because communities are having their own issues, mm -hmm. internal Which issues. Are changing. Constantly. Yes, yes. So, and uh, when you have two shows changing every three years, mm -hmm. it it's brings a different it, perspective. Yes, yes. yes. So yeah. we have to take all those into consideration. But we have been making progress, and we continue to ask the two shows and the people the communities to come up with suggestions, not only the problems. If you have a bag of problems, work with another work bag of suggestions. Oh, yes, mm -hmm. correct. So, That's a good way to go. Yes, and um, as long as we are fully involved, truly involved, mm -hmm. honest about this, I think we could uh, get our, <coughs> our plans going. In addition to that, we have for the communities to be sustainable. We've been supporting with projects for village economies to grow. Of course, uh, business is not, is not something that is easy. Mm -hmm. see, a lot of people who does business, they go and they get their degrees. In communities, you have to be, have a team to teach. And you, may, you, you would be aware that indigenous peoples like theory and practice are almost going together so that they could be able to practice it and see it work. If it doesn't work, they move quickly, so especially in the hinterland. So development is here. We cannot shy away from it, and that is why we need to build the capacity of, of the people within these communities. And we have focused on this program we call the Hinterland Employment Youth Service. That is to give the young people the foundation for rising to the occasion of economic development, mm -hmm. uh, social security, and leadership opportunities in their communities. Mm -hmm. How has that program been going? What have the, the participants been up to? <clears throat> I must say that while it is not 100% perfect, we have learned a lot and we have gained a lot and we have seen a lot, a lot of young people, especially those um, single parents. Mm -hmm. They have really, really uh, come up to the challenge and they're, they're helping with the economy, helping with 
even creating more job job opportunities for family members or even beyond. Mm -hmm. So there are in some regions, <coughs> excuse me, there are really um, wonderful experiences, wonderful projects that is mm -hmm. ongoing and is growing, and that is what we need to. Give, give us some examples of, of these projects. I think some are. Uh, poultry rearing and stuff like that, but what are the other things they're focusing on? Yeah, we have in Region 1 uh, two, two young fellows who are of single parentage, a mother, and they joined the, the program and they did, uh, they started with lumbering. Mm -hmm. They pulled their money together and they bought a chainsaw and a board mill and they started supplying the the village with the uh, materials for their housing and other stuff. And then they moved on into dress materials and started to make um, desks and benches and tables and chairs. And uh, that is growing. Mm -hmm. And that is where you need, uh, as long as you have the skills, that is what people will go for to in uh, allowing their homes to be better prepared and so on. So, but that is uh, funding coming into them and they're growing. And they're not only concentrating on that alone, they have a little shop going to buy other stuff. And that, that was really, really encouraging. Mm -hmm. Two young men who have that idea and w was able to put that idea into practice. There <coughs> has been another girl, this is in Region 1 again, who started with 50 chickens. And within an eight-month period, she was like 400. Mm -hmm. And her grandfather was like the manager mm -hmm. while she was moving to get things done. Marketing and Marketing and getting the feed. And mm -hmm. and then eventually having a, a a little shop there too because in the area there are a lot of boats. So have, having oil or fuel mm -hmm. to sell was an addition to her, to her business. Uh, because while the chickens are growing, you know, you could do something, do something else. else yeah. Likewise, uh, there was uh, in Region 10, a young woman who, well, the age limit to that is between 16 to 35. Mm -hmm. There was this young woman who had already had <laughs> six children, and her husband was incarcerated. So she had to take care. She said, luckily this thing came and she went and she did this study. She sacrificed. She learned to do her accounts and uh, in business. And and she's really excelling now. She said that in addition to sewing and other things, she's making it. And her children while they're at home would help. Mm -hmm. But she now have um, uh, a better future for herself. She was so happy that this came around. So, so these people just need the, the help and the, the right. little push to get them started right. and going. Wonderful. So that's the uh, hinterland uh, employment. employment for the youth. Yes. Okay. So moving along now, what's next on the list of uh, accomplishments as oh. we continue to All have right. these conversations? We know that oil will be here next year. Oil, money, and oil, and so on. Mm -hmm. The thinking out there is not to to wait on that oil money, but to get in readiness, get prepared, get prepared. yes. Uh, how you're going to u utilize this funding when it comes. And uh, we see education, appropriate education, as being that, um, that facility, <laughs> yes. And uh, we have embarked upon what I call the green Green Enterprise Center. We started one in um, in Anai, Bina Hill. That's about to be completed, where you will have training in high quality mechanics, drivers, uh, welders, uh, other business people in agriculture, mm -hmm. in tourism, in in all the things that is needed within that area, um, including IT and um, other agricultural businesses like packaging and so on, mm -hmm. 
through solar using renewable energy. And why we selected the Anai area is because of the only trailer which is going to become a road mm -hmm. is passing through that area and the pressures of development will be there. So that uh, we see is going to become really a, a key for using that road, mm -hmm. creating cottage industries. You see, if you get this, this knowledge, this, 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 um, the skills, mm -hmm. high quality skills, you would be a ready participant for the employment opportunities that, that will become. Mm -hmm. Don't wait until it happens. Mm -hmm. So, and the more we have that, we would have cottage industries using renewable energy, like the hydro at, and this is only for Region 9, Moko Moko, um, hydro, solar farms, like in Region 1, we have the solar farm. We expect more solar farms to become in place. Wind, wind power, mm -hmm. and well, we have uh, those things. As long as you have that skill, then you could be able to utilize the technology and the equipment readily. Take for example, we've also had the experience in um, Parmakotai, having the one of our first. Um, solar system, solar dryer, really, really good system to dry the tomatoes up in that area to get it lighter so you could compete with the, the markets down here. You bring the, the products down and then you add value to it, mm -hmm. making the tomato dressing and tomato paste and ketchup and, and so. Yeah, so these are some of the examples and we have in the Region 8 area to the um, lapidary. Mm -hmm. You have stones all over there that you could now turn into to a livelihood. Mm -hmm. And uh, y you don't have to go plan that. As long as you do it properly, have a proper machine, look for the markets, and we have markets. Mm -hmm. that so some youths were involved in, in yes, training for that? Yes, they have already been trained in Brazil, mm -hmm. and that should be kicking off very soon. We also have like the revamping of the coffee industry in Region 1, mm -hmm. and that is going nicely. We just hope that, um, well, not hope, I think the people are now so interested that we don't have the, the volume of planting materials oh. yet. <laughs> but um, that is ongoing, and we see like the cassava also up in Region 2, Region 1, and uh, the, the crab and fish uh, facility that is going to be at Smith Creek, Smith Creek, and uh, other, other small activities. Likewise, um, we are now in the process of having the feasibility study for three other institutions, such as the Bean Hill Green Facility in regions one, seven, and eight. Okay. When, when we finish that, um, we'll see how it goes. But those areas, the more you could take the equipment, mm -hmm. the facilities the there, facilities there. Mm -hmm. it makes the people, they're comfortable there, and they would excel. Mm -hmm. And we have seen in the, the approach through education and through, through uh, the Ministry of Communications, We've seen what it could, what could happen. This year, we, uh, we are so proud that the hinterland schools have sort of excelled. We've gone to another level. Well, it, it seems it, as though um, you're reading my mind because I, the next thing I was going to come to is uh, how are we dealing, uh, uh, how are we doing in terms of education, in, in terms of the education wise? So you can continue. Right. <laughs> so um, we have recognized for some time now that there is hidden, undiscovered education in the hinterland. Mm -hmm. And here is where real life exists. We, we take things for granted, but if it hadn't been for the protection of those forests, mm -hmm. if the indigenous peoples say, had the mindset of others to just plunder, mm -hmm. we would have been destroying the very thing that we depend on. And that is the uh, healthy 
ecosystem. And if you do not understand what makes up a healthy ecosystem, then you're in danger. And we have our people who are aware of this, that needs the support that they're being given now to protect that those two valuable uh, natural resources, water and air, they're more valuable than even oil, diamond or gold, because without water, nothing, nothing at all survives. Mm -hmm. So the type of education we say is appropriate education. We have to bring both together, the old ways and the new ways, with modern science and common sense, and also to allow our own uh, university to have that uh, driving role in allowing the hinterland and the coast to connect. And when we could do that, I think it would be a, one of the greatest thing that could happen to Guyana, unifying the country just for the sake of Guyana and for the sake of humanity. All right, well, you know, I know we could go, um, you know, half an hour is just um, just such a short time to, uh, to do a review and to go through the uh, many accomplishments and, and, and look at a little bit of some of the challenges as well. And we're coming uh, down to program time. So I want you to um, leave with our listeners and viewers uh, some thoughts on the way forward. What is the next step? Um, what are some of the expectations and so on? And, um, you know, what can we look forward to? I know uh, oil is important. We, we, we talked a little bit about that. Uh, we talked about being prepared for um, these uh, impending things. Uh, but from you, uh, as Minister of Indigenous Peoples Affairs and um, um, responsible for so many, many um, people as well, uh, what is the thought that you'd like to leave for them as we prepare to wrap up this conversation today? Okay, first of all, I would like to say the all the ministries uh, we have been working with, we think that is the key for support mm -hmm. instead of uh, mashing on <laughs> one's toes, but to give support. And that will allow us to see the bigger picture. And I would like to ask the entire nation to look at this bigger picture, which is uh, one to support one another for the use of the oil money. Mm -hmm. Think positively about what it is that we would like to see happen in the future. Plan not to forget our farming. Plan not to forget that we are one, a, a nation, that is very, very fortunate at this time. Uh, plan to see Guyana as the next, the next what, the next, um, I can't find a word, but it is the going, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Guyana, Guyana is the, is the country mm -hmm. in this hemisphere that could bring a better life to each and every one, only if we come together. I love all Guyanese to come together and see themselves as that player in making life better for all. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you, Minister Sidney Alicott, Minister of Indigenous Peoples Affairs.